Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is April 3rd, 2024. Here is another daily analysis. We had kind of like an optic today. Um, it's kind of like a doji bar, basically. Nothing more than that. So S&P 500 just bounced off. This is SMA 20, which is kind of like a tradition for um, kind of like uh, the last the rally, which we are still in, in at the beginning of let's say January, we just uh, defend that this, this SMA twenty every single time, and all analysis just coming here that buying the dip, the dip is going to be SMA twenty when price is reaching down to uh, SMA twenty. Everyone just uh, find a tons of support there and just bouncing back up. So today we got kind of like a natural or kind of like a typical reaction to this SMA twenty. I'm not sure if it's gonna just to hold on for that one. So if it breaks through to the downside, it's going to be a sharp sell off all the way to here to SMA 50, which is going to be this area, which is going to be 5,000 area. And that's going to be kind of like a fair amount of support, which is going to be kind of like a 5% correction. If it goes lower, which is going to be a 10% correction all the way down to 48 to 4,900, which is going to be a fantastic buying opportunity. If you ask me uh, for the next, uh, a rally to the upside. The bull is not over yet, so I don't think we're gonna just uh, see the uh, massive crash right now. But time is uh, cl uh, clicking right now, and uh, and we should just uh, um, be careful about the down the road. But right now we are in a bullish momentum. Market is just showing us another stochastic. is pretty nice. Like it is in bullish trend, so we are just uh, getting uh, close to over kind of like a sold condition. I don't know what over sold condition stochastic shows me, but when it when we get there, that's going to be kind of like important signal for the next rally because last time we got it here, it's kind of like here in January, and uh, after that we didn't get down to this oversold condition. And the previous one was kind of like in October time, so we got oversold condition. A, bear, a bull reversal. Right now, we are just uh, getting close to this one for the third time. So if it goes to, I should say again, uh, SMA 50, which is kind of like a 5,550, 5, 100. So that's going to be kind of like a good a bullish signal for the market. Um, moving on to NASDAQ, which is kind of like lagging. And uh, today it's kind of like a laggard. It's going down. It's uh, it, it was going up, but still uh, recaptured this SMA 20. Um, again, double test this important pivot here. So NASDAQ is lagging compared to S&P 500, which is supposed to be the other way. NASDAQ is supposed to lead and S&P is supposed to lag, but right now S&P is leading and NASDAQ is lagging. And it's kind of like a showing this. If it goes below this pivot, which is going to be 17,000 area, so that's going to be kind of like interesting sell-off. We can see all the way down here to 16,000 to 17,000 area for a great buying opportunity or bounce. So either um, we can just take it as a good buying opportunity. Right now, I should say a market can, um, I can see some kind of like a shaky um, April, May. It could be kind of like uh, the scenario that I'm just uh, looking for. And then afterwards we can see good decent rally, uh, especially second, uh, second half of May all the way to the June and June, July, we should see some kind of like a volatility and August is going to be very, very volatile market. Um, um, so just to be mindful about that. Moving on to US 30, which is Dow Jones. Dow just coming down today. It didn't follow the other indexes. Dow is just lagging. And this is kind of like a typical uh, price action. We are just uh, seeing consolidation near SMA 20. We had this before, but it's kind of like a zigzagging to the upside. Right now, it's just coming down. So if it goes down here, it doesn't hold this pivot. So we can see some kind of like a sharp sell off all of it down here um, to this important area, which is going to be a demand area. And uh, we can see some kind of like a bounce after that. So the ideal scenario is going to be a correction all of it down to here. But right now, we don't see any sign of the correction. If it goes to the downside target, we're going to take it as a good buying opportunity. Moving on to crude, uh, sorry, gold, which had a fantastic move today. Again, new all-time high, 2300. Congratulations for all those folks who just follow me on this analysis as well. So we just got into 2300, a fantastic uh, move for gold uh, recently. 
So it's just hiking up. I believe that 23 uh, 90 or somewhere around 50 to 90 is going to be important pivotal point, which we should see some kind of like a decent correction to the downside. But still, the time is not there yet. So we should just be careful about that. We should expect some more rally, especially silver is just waking up. So that's going to be the next chart. Uh, silver had fantastic move to the upside, 4% to the upside, close above $27, which is great. So if you just see this, this is a daily chart and uh, silver just to get above this, have it all in one shot, actually two shots, which is fantastic for silver. Now we are getting into an important demand, a supply area here, somewhere around a 27 to $28. So this is kind of like the previous top for silver. And we should see some kind of like a move um, right now. A silver is just heading to the upside as well. So 27. But I should say, um, when you go to weekly chart, I should say the, there is a, still a bullish momentum. So then I just look at this pattern. Look at this pattern here. So if you see the same as me, like this is kind of like a nice reverse head and shoulder with a fantastic bull flag, weekly bull flag triggered just today or this week to the upside. You should see some kind of like good bullish momentum all the way to 30 plus for silver. Right now we are 27, so silver still can go higher, but correction could be a good buying opportunity. And this area could be lots of resistance here. As you see, this is uh, kind of like um, a monthly supply area. And right now we are just like breaking out to the upside. I should say silver can go easily to this area, which was kind of like before getting into that level. Right now, I should say we can get more, but $30, $32, that could be kind of like the area that I'm looking for as like a targeting place. Moving on to crude, which had a doji bar here. So crude just got into this upper trend line here. So we got into this and a crude is just uh, potentially can see some kind of like a pullback. However, lots of geopolitical tensions are here. Inflation is still here is sticky. So crude $85. So uh, we just uh, need to keep an eye on this, especially Iran and Israel. Seems like they're just uh, especially Israel initiating another kind of like a danger um, action against Iran. And Iran seems like they're going to answer this time. And if they do answer, I should say the crude price can go higher than that and can easily get to 100 level uh, because uh, that escalation is not going to finish soon. I believe that. So I take it like as a personal idea. Um, I I wish everyone just to be in a peace and, and hope for a peace. But uh, the geopolitical tensions here is getting dramatic. So just to be careful about these precious metals and also the crude as well. So before moving to... Um, individual names. I just want to show you this chart. This is TLT, which we covered a lot in our individual daily analysis, but this is weekly chart. Specifically, I just want to mention that. So this goes against a bond yield. Based on this chart, I should say this is a fantastic bull flag. Let me just clear up this Fibonacci, Fib extension. This is better. So when I see this chart, I should say, um, while we are in a nice bull reversal here in stochastic, we just got into this nice bull flag here, just below this important trend line. So whenever when I see this, I should say everyone needs to be kind of like ready for a sparky moment for bond. So the potential scenario is gonna be bond yield is gonna drop sooner than everyone is expecting or kind of like estimation is coming that bond yield is going to drop probably more than everyone is expecting. So this can accelerate rally to 107 and even higher. It can go all the way up to $114 for bond to just test this pivotal point. And that would be kind of like 120. So Bond yield uh, potentially is going to go down while bond is forming a very, very nice bullish scenario to the upside. So 
take it from me and note it down and mark it down in your chart. Bond is about to have a fantastic rally, the same as happened for silver and gold. So bond is lagging and it's kind of like a poison for a next rally to the upside. So just, just mark it on your chart, go to the weekly chart and see how it goes down the road. Moving on to individual names, starting with Bitcoin. Had a bounce today, but not a strong one. I believe that this is just accumulation uh, or distribution. Or can it, this is a base. So this is going to be a drop base, a drop, I believe. And it can go lower even to 50 to 52K, which is going to be the target zone for me. Um, and I think that it's going to happen. A bond yield is kind of like a forming down today. So heading to the downside. This can go lower still. It can go to this important area. TLT, we just talked about it. So this is kind of like a daily chart still. I believe that this is kind of like a the low. And I should say we can go kind of like a lower potentially for this. And these lows are going to be a fantastic buy. I just initiate a signal for my subscribers today. It's a free signal. Go to Telegram channel. Safi Financial Network, you will see that signal. So I just uh, initiate a buy signal for this. VIX is coming down today, but I believe that the next rally is coming because the stock market is about to correction. DIX is coming down sharply. I believe that bond yield is going to follow this one. And that's why commodity just are going higher. Magma indicator goes up at $11 to the upside. Apple just moved higher. Uh, potentially, it can go lower for another dip. And then we can just buy and accumulate more Apple. Right now, it's not there yet. Um, we had two portions, but I'm waiting for another, other two portions as well. Amazon, $1.72 up. And Meta, $9.37 up. Microsoft, $0.99 cents down. Google, $0.36 cents up. After hours, it just took a hit. I don't know why. Um, Netflix, a $15 down up today. A good price action. Tesla. $1.75 up. So Tesla is holding this at 157 ish area. So we should just uh, we should just be um, kind of like mindful about this level. If it goes down, I should say Tesla can go to the bearish momentum all the way down to 124, 137. But if it doesn't, still we can see some kind of like a bullish momentum to 200 level for Tesla. SMH, uh, semiconductors. Index, uh, they just uh, go higher 90 cents today. Socks, the same pattern, 63 cents up, still lagging compared to uh, the recent price action. Ta Taiwan Semiconductor goes up. Um, well, um, we had earthquake in Taiwan, but uh, nothing happened basically there. That's good. Thanks for engineering and uh, good work for the building. AMD, $2 up today, still consolidating this bear flag, I believe. Can go lower. NVIDIA, $4 down today. So it was not great price action for NVIDIA. Texas Instrument going down two cents, but after hours, it just again a bit. So it just ended up finished the day positive. Lamb Research, $11 for change up. So um, kind of like a mixed session for semiconductors. Moving on to financials, which they took a hit today. So XLF, two cents down. KBE, three cents down. KRE, 10 cents down. JP Morgan, 56 cents down. And Goldman Sachs, they just went down $3. Bank of America, 14 cents up. And Wells Fargo took a hit. Still bull flag here. Um, but this is structure, actually, if it goes below 56.40, that could be get ugly. Uh, GDX, which is gold miner, what a move. So remember, we were talking about gold miners can be outperformer, especially in second quarter. Fair enough. We had fantastic move. We're just uh, getting into this important breakdown zone. Still, it can go higher. If it goes above 33.19 cents, it can go easily to $34. GDXJ, fantastic breakout to the upside. So it can go higher, I believe. Uh, 42 is coming down the road. AEM, Agnico Eagle, fantastic surge to the upside. This is a nice a bullish consolidation here. It can go higher. The next level is going to be 68. Newmont, a good move today as well. Franco Nevada, mm, that was a shallow kind of like a move. Franco Nevada is very heavy these days. I don't know why it doesn't have too much move, but 
it's just following the industry so it can go higher. I believe 122, 128, that could be a strong resistance there. Gold Barrick, a dollar, uh, actually 24 cents up, not a bad price action. Gold Barrick is just uh, getting higher as well. Moving on to the last sector for today, XLE, fantastic move. Uh, 60 cents cents up. XOP, oil and gas exploration ETF, dollar 97 cents up. Orage, six dollar four cents up. Look at that. So when this triangle broken to the upside, look at the move. It goes all the way up to this high. Exxon, two cents up. Chevron, sixty cents cents up. So Chevron just um, it is in a kind of like important level. If it goes higher, I would be definitely surprised. I think that Chevron is kind of like lagging. It can go lower, but uh, seems like I was wrong. Actually, obviously I was wrong. And a Chevron doesn't go higher than that, but um, we will see. We will see how it goes. Again, keep an eye on geopolitical tensions, and we will see how it goes. Hopefully, peace is going to be everywhere one day. But this is just a hope, not reality, unfortunately. Have a fantastic evening. See you on the chart. Bye bye.